Good morning, my friends. My name is Lama Jigme Gyatso. Let's get right to it. Today I'm going to give you a guided meditation. The new material is going to be something that we call in Tibetan Tantra or Buddhist Tantra Maha Yoga. Now I'm going to insert that in the context of the previous techniques. What are the previous techniques? Well, we have, in terms of sets of three minutes, we have Lo Zhang, we have Vipassana, we have Lo Rig. Today we're going to start practicing Maha Yoga, and then we will conclude with Dzogchen. For a total of, let's see, 6 times 3 is 18, for a total of 18 minutes. I'm going to get some water, but don't worry, I'll keep talking. Now, if you were to practice these techniques on their own, you would take them approximately 18 minutes. But I'm going to be giving you constant commentary about the philosophical aspect of these techniques, as well as just the mechanics of how to count on your finger creases and which fingers to use for a desired effect. Now, if you do not wish to endure my jibber jabber, that's quite all right. Using the information below on the YouTube page, you'll find a link to a place on my website where you can download free versions of um, various PDFs which will have these meditations written out for you in contemplative notation. These literary works, we'll call them lesson texts, are a work in progress. So you'll have to hunt for the different techniques, but you know what? It's free, so there's no complaining, or as we say in Yiddish, vetching per minute. Vetching per minute. I learned vetching because I would complain all the time, and my, and my mother would say, don't vetch. <laughs> Suffer in silence. <laughs> okay, let's start with a bit of review. Every hand has four fingers and a thumb. These fingers are correlated to various cavities in our body. Our little finger, pelvic cavity. Our ring finger, abdominal cavity. Our middle finger, finger. You know that? Finger, plural cavity. Our index finger, cranial uh, cavity. Our brain case, if you prefer. Um, although that sounds like a bit of an automobile, does it not? <laughs> it sounds like we should be a robot. Anywho, enough of that. At this point in the practice, we're going to be working primarily by counting on our left ring finger. Every finger has many creases. If the creases are organized in a, a first set, a second set, and a third set. So we can use eight, uh, a finger to count to three. Now, when I say finger, I'm referring to, of course, the left hand. On the right hand, we use the three creases of that little finger, or three sets of creases, one, two, three. The three sets of creases of the right ring finger, four, five, six, and the three creases of the right middle finger, seven, eight, nine, to count to nine. So what we're really counting on the left hand is sets of nine. One set of nine, two sets of nine, three sets of nine. Three sets of nine breaths, if I remember second grade correctly, is 27, or a quarter mile. Approximately one set of nine 
is one minute. Three sets of nine, sorry, is three minutes. So we've organized the majority of these contemplation in units of three minutes, with the odd exception to the rule. Now, it's very easy. A newbie mistake would be to be obsessed about counting perfectly. Don't worry about it. After years of practice, you'll still make mistakes. The difference between a seasoned professional and newbie is that we, an, uh, a, a salty dog will be aware of a mistake a bit sooner than a newbie will. A salty dog will be non pulsed by a mistake, whereas a newbie can basically, as they say in France, lose their shit. <laughs> I've had some students who are very perfectionistic, one who had burst, down to or burst out into tears whenever she felt frustrated. Not a very cunning way to lead a peaceful or a happy life. So, we're going to make mistakes, and that's par for the course. The key is to notice your mistakes and work with them. To be able to roll with the punches. A surfer cannot hope to control the waves. The best he can do is be aware of what's going on and react to it with the utmost grace, and creativity, and playfulness. We need to be the spiritual version of surfers. Wait, I was off camera. There you go. Take two. Ping loose, dude. Anyway. <laughs> So let's move on. Let's actually meditate right now. So we're going to start with the Lojong set, which actually is, it takes about six minutes. And it starts off with renunciation, and then compassion, and then love, and then the union of the two. And these aren't individual exercises, but groups of contemplations that I've been able to organize for you in one cohesive set of approximately um, <coughs> six minutes or 54 breaths. It sounds very complicated, but I assure you, if you play with these exercises twice daily, within a few weeks or a few months, second nature. Let's jump right in. Left hand in lap, palm up. Notice the right hand. Notice the right hand's ring finger. The great knuckle at the back of the right hand, we're going to rest it upon the tip of the left ring finger. And we're going to and then put our hands in our hand. Once again, the first time we do it, kind of awkward. The 20th time you do it, not so awkward. The 50th time you do it, pretty easy. The 100th time, second nature. It's not different than making love. Come on, man, you know it. The first time you made love, you were spazzy von spaz spaz. You were awkward and ungainly. After a while, you got pretty good, hopefully. <laughs> if not, don't worry, we've got videos about that as well. So, let's get to it. Let's place the tip of the left thumb on the left ring finger, and slide the tip of that thumb down until it comes to the rest of the first set of creases at the base of the left ring finger, returning our attention to the right hand. 
Let's place the tip of the right thumb upon the right little finger. Let's slide that thumb tip down until it comes to rest on the first upon the first set of creases at the base of the right little finger. We're going to use the three sets of creases to count three breaths or three repetitions of the first contemplative question. As with all these questions, this, this question is rhetorical. We don't answer it. We ask the question on, and we relax, we release, we let go, we let the inner mind, we let the subconscious, we let the belly, we let the universe worry about the answer. We, all we got to do is play with the breath and the words. And that's all. So the first exercise is as follows. It's the rhetorical question that's divided in half. On the in-breath we ask, how this not? On the out-breath we ask, satisfied. Our hands are in our lap, pressed gently against our lower abdomen so that it becomes easier to be aware of the spontaneous articulation of the lower abdomen on every in-breath and out-breath. That's the key to being aware of our breathing and to harmonize these words with our breath. Even though these words are being recited, silently and mentally. Let's move the tip of our right thumb over to our right ring finger. Let's slide it down to the base. Let's use the three creases of the right ring finger to count three repetitions of the following contemplation. Why turn from suffering's cause? Excellent. Let's turn our attention, let's slide our right thumb over to our right middle finger. Let's slide it down to the base of the right middle finger and use that finger's three creases to count three repetitions of the contemplation. How karma be quite just. Return, please shift your attention to your left hand. Please slide the tip of your left thumb up your left ring finger until it comes to rest upon the second set of creases. For now, we're going to begin counting our second set of nine breaths. Please return your attention to your right hand. Place the tip of your right thumb on your right little finger, slide it down to its base, use its three creases to count three repetitions of the fourth renunciation exercise, which is quite simply how this chance be precious, or if you prefer better grammar, how could this chance be precious. Let's move the tip of our right thumb over to our right ring finger and slide it down to that finger's base. We'll use the three creases of that right ring finger to count three repetitions 
of the first compassion contemplation, that of sentimentality. How could each be kind mom? Now we're going to perform the next two contemplations, which are the compassionate version of equalizing self and others. Tip of the right thumb upon the right middle fingers. Slide that thumb down to the base of the right middle finger. Use that finger's three creases to count three repetitions of the rhetorical question. How could each hate their race? Left thumb slides up left ring finger, comes to rest upon the third set of that finger's creases. Right thumb returns to right little finger. How could each be the same? Right thumb to the base of the right ring finger. Why take rage releasing? Tip of the right thumb to the right, to the base of the right middle finger. Now we begin our love training. We'll start by performing the love version of the two exercises of equalizing self and others. How could each long to love? Let's slide the tip of the left thumb down the left ring finger until it comes to rest upon the first set of creases at that left ring finger's base. For now we are beginning the third set of 27 breaths. Actually, the second set, my mistake. Tip of the right thumb to the base of the right ring finger. I'm sorry, little finger. Ooh, so many mistakes. How could each be the same? Tip of the right thumb to the base of the right ring finger. 
Now form is a union of logic and law, also known as exchanging self and others. How could all be more than me? We're talking about mathematics. Tip of the right thumb down and over to the base of the right middle finger. Why give love? Releasing. Tip of the left thumb slides up the left ring finger until it comes to rest upon the second set of creases. Tip of the right thumb slides down and over to the base of the right little finger. We've completed renunciation contemplations, compassion contemplations, and love contemplations. And now we're going to begin combining both compassion and love in the taking and giving set of exercises, which is known in Tibet as Hong Meng, T-O-N-G-O-E-N. In through pores, out through pores, and that is our breath work. Tip of right thumb, down and over to the base of the right ring finger. Take rage smoke, give love light. Tip of the right thumb slides down and over to the base of the right middle finger. Take rage smoke, give love light. Tip of the left thumb slides incrementally up the left ring finger until it comes to rest upon the third set of creases. The tip of the right thumb slides down and over to the base of the right little finger. For our last set of three contemplations of Take Rage Smoke Give love light.
And we're now going to perform the one-syllable version of the same contemplation. Tip of the right thumb slides down and over to the base of the right ring finger. Rage, love. Tip of the right thumb slips, slides down and over to the base of the right middle finger. Three more repetitions of rage, love. These, this is not really instruction. This is guided meditation. When you have questions, jot them down and submit them via by using the Facebook link below the video. Let's slide the tip of our left thumb down our left ring finger until it comes to rest upon the first set of creases at the base of the left ring finger. Let's slide the tip of our right thumb down over to the base of our right little finger. We've completed our first set of six minute meditation known as Lo Zhang. Lo Zhang is the bet word for the phrase mind training. Came to Tibet from the Bengali master. They called it Tisha in Tibet, but who in India was known as Sri Jana Dipankara. He received the set of teachings over a course of 12 years um, from Serling Pa, who lived in Indonesia. So between Tibetans, Indonesians, Indians, there is no room for racism on the spiritual path. Sadly, that has not prevented it from creeping in. And as uh, a white boy, I experienced uh, the, the racist side of Buddhism when I lived in various monasteries, be they Theravadan or Mahayana. Racism is not a component of Buddhism or Taoism. It's a component of humanity's dark side. Wherever there are humans, there are going to be shitheads. In fact, it is arguable that foolishness is humanity's greatest resource, or at least its most abundant resource. We're now going to wade into the wisdom teachings. This next set of three minutes is going to be focusing on the essence of Vipassana. Tip of the right thumb at the base of the right little finger. How could these feelings be dependent?
Tip of the right thumb down and over to the base of the right ring finger. How could these feelings never last? Tip of the right thumb down and over to the base of the right middle finger. How could these feelings not be me? Tip of the left thumb slides incrementally up. The left ring finger comes to rest upon the second set of creases. Tip of the right thumb slides down and over to the pinky or little finger. How could these sounds be dependent? Tip of the right thumb, thumb sl slides down and over to the right ring finger. How could these sounds always change? Tip of the right thumb slides down and over to the base of the right middle finger. How could these sounds not be me? Tip of the left thumb slides up the left ring finger incrementally until it comes to rest upon the third set of creases. Tip of the right thumb slides down and over to the base of the right little finger. Even though our eyes are closed, we now contemplate how could the sights be dependent. Tip of the right thumb slides down and over to the base of the right ring finger. How could these sounds, I'm sorry, how could these sights always change? Tip of the right thumb slides down and over to the base of the right middle finger. How could these sights not be me? Please slide the tip of your left thumb down your left 
ring finger all the way down until it comes to the first set of creases at the left ring finger's place. We are now going to perform the nine contemplations of Lo Rig. Lo Rig is mind's nature. Or in other words, we typically hang. There's an old phrase, you've heard it before, a hook to hang your hat upon. Well, we hang the hat of pride, self-grasping. Self-grasping sounds like a euphemism for teenage masturbation, but I assure you, it is not. So, we hang the hook, we hang the hat of pride upon the hook of our body and our mind in this label we call self, me, mind. We're going to explore once again, the interdependence and the impermanence and the inherent non-graspability of our body and our mind and our sense of self to free ourselves from the habits of being self-centered, or at least self-obsessed. Tip of the right thumb slides down and over to the base of the right pinky. How could this body, you guessed it, be dependent? Let us not be disenchanted with simple techniques. It is a mistake to confuse the complex for the effect. That is why the contemporary genius Albert Einstein said, and I shall paraphrase, any educated fool can make things more complicated, more violent, more difficult, but it takes a little courage and a touch of genius to move in the opposite direction. Remember, my friends, the test of these teachings is not whether they appeal to your logic or your intuition, but the results they generate when you practice them twice daily every day. If you can't do something twice daily every day, then me and my teachings are the least of your problems. Let's continue. Tip of right thumb slides down and over to the base of the right ring finger. How could this body always change? We shed cells every day. We get a new body every seven years. Is that what that's what the experts tell me? How could this body always change? Tip of the right thumb slides down and over to the base of the right middle finger. How could this body not be me? Tip of the left thumb slides incrementally up the left ring finger until it comes to rest upon that finger's second set of creases. 
increases. Right thumb slides down and in to the base of the left middle finger. How could this mind be dependent? Tip of the right thumb slides down and out to the base of the right ring finger. How could this mind always change? Tip of the right thumb slides down and out to the base of the right middle finger. How could this mind not be me? Do remember these are rhetorical questions. It is not our job to answer these questions. It is our job to ask these questions in harmony with the inflow and outflow of our breath, while striving or at least intending to relax as much as we can during each exhalation. The tip of the left thumb slides incrementally up the left ring finger until it comes to rest upon the third set of that ring finger's creases. The tip of our right thumb slides down and in over to the base of the right little finger. How could I be dependent? Tip of the right thumb slides down and out to the base of the right ring finger. How could I always change? Tip of the right thumb slides down and out and over to the base of the right middle finger. How could I not be me? Tip of the left thumb slides all the way down the left middle finger. 
until it comes to rest upon the first set of creases at that left middle finger, I'm sorry, ring finger's base. We're still in the left ring finger. Now the tip of the right thumb slides down and in and over to the base of the right middle finger. And now we get to the third and final and new set of wisdom trainings. It has been said that the sutra teachings are about philosophy and the tantric teachings are about technique. This set of exercises Although it comes from the lowest echelon of highest yoga tantra, highest yoga tantra in Sanskrit is the Sanskrit is the Uttara Tantra. It is basically an overlap, a Venn diagram, if you will. A Venn diagram is when you have two or more circles and they overlap. So the overlapping area between Uttara Tantra, or Highest Yoga Tantra, and Philosophical Sutra would be Maha Yoga, which uses both technique and philosophy, which is quite lovely. We call this Maha Yoga, or Great Union. Perhaps you are familiar with the phrase, the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. If, like me, you too are a sci-fi geek, then you will remember the conversation that Yoda had with Obi-Wan Kenobi on the, in of the Dagobah system about Luke in The Empire Strikes Back. And I'm going to do a very bad quote. It's going to be highly paraphrased, and it's not a good imitation. But Yoda said, Always to the future of this one's eyes, are set. He, he was referring to the fact that Luke was never even looking, never even trying to master his present moment, and always seeking a solution in some place else and in some other time. We have been very much like that on very many occasions. In the spiritual world or the semi-spiritual world, well, no, in the, hmm, in the conventional world, we have celebrities. Some are movie stars, some are athletes, some are politicians, some are billionaires. And we envy their wealth, and power, and beauty, and skill, and fame, and lifestyle, and privilege. And we wish we could be like them, and we wish we could be them. And every ounce of desire we put into that, we lose our gratitude, and our bliss, for who we are, and where we are, and what we have, and what we experience. Just as the conventional world has its celebrities, so does every spiritual tradition, whether it's Eastern or Western whether it's Judaism, Christianity, Islam, whether it's 
Hinduism, Sikhism, Jainism, Buddhism, Taoism, whether it's shamanism, whether it's Wicca, they're all real or imagined, corporeal or non-corporeal celebrities. In the previous lessons, I taught you how to recite the Tibetan name for the Buddha of Compassion, Chandrezi. In previous guided meditations, I trained you to pronounce his mantra, Om Mani Padme Hum. Many people and many spiritual traditions long to be like the great saints whose every utterance was a spell and whose every locale was a paradise. And we can so long for the person power and the paradise of these spiritual celebrities, we forget how to savor and treasure our own person, our own power, and our own place. Not for the sake of complacency, self-justification, or self-aggrandizement, but for the sake of peace. For it is in peace that we can go with the flow and dance with the universe in the most wonderful way. <laughs> Sadly, over the millennia, over the many, many centuries, great corruption has entered into virtually every spiritual tradition. And the metaphors have been confused with literal statements, and the contemplations have been replaced with affirmations. People have missed the forest for the trees. This highly controversial presentation of the essence of Maha Yoga seeks to heal our envy and flood us with the wonder of contentment. Tip of left thumb at the base of the left ring finger. Tip of the right thumb in and over and down at the base of the right little finger. We're going to start with a familiar contemplation. How could this body be dependent. And now for the change. How could Chain Rezig be dependent? The Buddha of Compassion, whether he is real or imagined, began as a human. He evolved into a Buddha. How? Through causality. By applying his teacher, his teacher's instructions. His teacher was Amitabha, the Buddha of Limitless Light. By applying his instructions, that was the action. The results were his evolution. We call that causality. 
So we at least consider the possibility that Chen Rezig is also subject to interdependence. Slide the tip of the uh, right thumb down and out, the base of the right ring finger. How could Chen Rezig be dependent? And now, we bake the noodle, not intellectually, but viscerally. How could this body be like chain lazy? We already have the answer. The common denominator in our Venn diagram, the area of overlap between the circle of this body and the circle of Chen Rezig is, you guessed it, dependence. So we're not as different as our fears and our dualistic ideas lead us to the limit. And so we come across, we now deconstruct the limiting belief of separation. Tip of the right thumb slides down and out to the base of the right middle finger. How could this body be like? Chain raise. Tip of the left thumb slides incrementally up. The left ring finger comes to rest upon the second crease of the left ring finger. Tip of the right thumb slides down and in and over to the base of the right little finger. How could this speech always change. I just said the phrase, always change. Those are the three syllables. So with each syllable, there was change. If you enjoy physics, you'll understand that sound can be described as a vibration, as a wave, and as such, it was always changing. How could this speech always change? Tip of right thumb slides down and out to the base of the right ring finger. How could the money always change? The money is the nickname for our money of money of who? How could O money upon me whom change? Simple. For own becomes ma, becomes ni, becomes pa, becomes me, becomes who? Mantra can only be the resonance of the mantra is dependent upon motion and consequently change. Has your noodle been baked yet? Don't worry, it will be. How could the money always change? It's 
tip of the right thumb slides down and out to the base of the right middle finger. <coughs> My speech is so impotent and the money is so powerful. How could they be as the same? Where do they overlap? What is their commonality? Change. How could this speech be like the money? How could this speech be like the money? Are you feeling more content or are you feeling more centered? Tip of the left thumb slides up the left ring finger until it comes to rest upon the third, its third set of creases. Tip of the right thumb slides down and in and over to the base of the right little finger. And now we're going to deal with our environment. Be careful, you've noticed. We've dealt with dependence, and we've dealt with change. What's the third thing we usually deal with? Not me. That is our overlap. How could this place not be me? Tip of the right thumb slides down and out to the base of the right ring finger. Now when I say paradise, I'm referring to a Buddha's paradise that we'll explore in later teachings. Whether it's real or imagined, we tend to think in terms that somewhere there's a paradise that's awesome all the time. And so, we tend to denigrate, at least inferentially, our present place. How could paradise not be me? Tip of right thumb slides down and over to the base of the right middle finger. How could here be like, or better yet, how could this place be like paradise? And the answer is they're both not me. If you're not careful, you'll feel more centered and more peaceful. Not in a concrete way, but in a way that plugs you more into the flow so the universe can lead you and help you to evolve in every possible way. For those who resist change or are destroyed by change, I forgot who said this, 
Perhaps you will be know the answer, know the origin of this quote, you'll write it in the comments section on Facebook. I learned this quote from Star Trek, the original series. Those whom the gods would destroy, they first drive mad. Perhaps it was those whom the gods would bring low, they first tried to I suspect that was uttered by the Greeks, obviously in their language, not mine. Or perhaps it's a reference to the Book of Daniel. I'm not sure. Change is a metaphor on the subatomic level, on the molecular level, on the biological level, on the geological level, on the astrological level, change is inevitable. And we resist it at our own peril. Choose to be centered to service our pride and self-satisfaction, to increase our peace and our groundedness and our flexibility and our gentleness. With contentment, there is no striving. With no striving, there is less resistance to change. Change is inevitable. Let's come. Let us dance with the universe. Let us conclude the uh, contemplation portion of this morning's practice with a review of what I like to call the essence of Dzogchen. There are three levels of highest yoga tantra. Creation stage, or maha yoga, that we just practiced. Completion stage, when we play with our channels and our winds and our drops, and, and that's coming up in future videos. And great completion stage, where we deal with the union of awareness and letting go. Ironically, this is also considered the basis of the Theravadan path. One path calls this its pinnacle, the other path calls it its foundation, yet the techniques are in their essence the same. By the way, you should have already come to this conclusion by observing the practices of our Vipassana, our Lurig, and our Maha Yoga. What, my friends, what are the three pillars of Buddha's wisdom teachings? Dependence, change, and not me. We've used them a whole bunch of times we're not using it over and over again because we lack imagination. We use them because they are in the innermost essence of that which works best. Tip of left thumb slides down, the left ring finger comes to rest upon its, well, I'll tell you what, perhaps we should wake up. We don't want you going through the day in a stupor. 
let's move the tip of the left thumb over to the left pinky and allow it to rest in the first crease. Tip of the right thumb slides down and in to the base of the right pinky. What's seeing? With your eyes closed, releasing. Tip of the right thumb slides down and out to the right ring finger. What you ring, really see. Tip of the right thumb slides down and out to the base of the right middle finger. What feeling releasing? Tip of the left thumb slides up the left little finger, coming to rest upon that finger's second set of creases. Tip of the right thumb slides down and in and over to the base of the right pinky. How could this be funny? Tip of the right thumb slides down and out to the base of the right ring finger. On the first crease of the right ring finger we contemplate or actually intend, grin with lips, releasing. Sliding our thumb up to the second crease of our right ring finger, we intend with the words, grin with cheeks, really sing. Sliding the tip of our thumb up our right ring finger until it comes to rest upon that finger's third set of creases. We intend grin with eyes, really see. Sliding the tip of our right thumb down and out. We allow it to come to rest on the base of our right middle finger. Noticing, relaxing. Sliding the tip of our left thumb up our left little finger until it comes to rest upon the its third set of creases. We slide the tip of our right thumb down and into the base of our right little finger. And now we're going to perform nine repetitions of the essentialized contemplation. This is.
eyes open, my friends. Let's recite the recitations that help us to invest and multiply the good karma that we just generated through the cunning use of ambition and love. Call and response. By this virtue, may I now accomplish the spontaneous, habitual, easy and effective mastery of Buddha's mental yogas, of wisdom, peace, love, and joy. And now lead every living being, without exception to this ground. May everyone be healthy, wealthy, and happy. May everyone practice skillfully and joyfully. May everyone accomplish Chen Rezig in this life, and then how many others do likewise. For truly that is the meaning of life, Om Mani Padme Hum. Now, this is the 18 minute, the 18 minute guided meditation. As you can infer, I've got a whole bunch of guided meditation videos. In this series, the first one is the three minute, the second one is the six minute, the third one is the nine minute, the fourth one is the twelfth minute, the fifth one is the fifteenth minute, the sixth one is the eighteenth minute. So, start with the first, whether you do one a day, or one a week, or one every day, or a week, or one twice a day, or a week. You stick with it, it might just change it, it might just evolve it, you put in the heights. If you think you could value from instruction, live instruction, in real time, whether in person if you live in the greater Los Angeles area, or over Skype, then the next series of live classes begins Monday, December 2nd. You can contact me on Facebook using the links below. You can register on the website using the link below. And I'd love to be of service to you. And I gotta, so that'll be great. And um, I guess that's all. May you and yours be healthy and happy. Om Mani Padme Hum. Y'all come back now. Bye bye.